you know. But uh, but I, I'm so ex I'm excited about these days. I I got best God more going. I'm gonna see more than I've seen, and it's more going to happen in here. See, all God wants is a body that's going to let Him work. That's all He wants. You know, it ain't it ain't whoever wherever God wherever a God God is allowed to operate, He'll do great and mighty things. And I'm telling you, you're going to see some thing going in this church. I'm telling you that right now, because I'm in agreement with it. I'm in agreement with God. So, so if, you, if you can't handle it, you know what I mean? You've got to find some rest to go because I tell you, we're going to roll with God. Amen. You know what I mean? I want to see the glory. I, I've, you know, I've, 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 I've seen the glory. God. I, I've been in, I've, I've seen the glory of God. I, I've been in meetings where dear God. Yes, where, where structure, what structure? What's that? Amen. You know what I mean? I've seen some things. You know, and I want to see some of that. Yes, I want to, see, this is what changes you. This is what dear God, this is what shake the shackles off. This is what gets you loose. This is what put a smile on your face. Amen. Amen. This is what gets you to take depression out of your heart. Amen. Put a, put a grin on your face. What's a, whatever a grin is, it's a smile. Grin is a smile. God has a word. We've been, we, we, you know, we've been uh, provoked to believe God. We weren't talking about believing God. Out of Numbers chapter number 14, and... Uh, the 11th verse, then God, then, then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? How long will they not believe me? And then uh, it said, with all the signs which I've performed among them, you know, how, how long is it going to be before they believe me? Then Joshua 24 and 15 responds like this. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord or to believe the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the God which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Now listen to this. But as for me, oh boy, it always comes to that. Now, you can do what you want to do. Now, that's real. I can, see, I can read this, but then I can read this. This is me. I can, as for me, I can tell you what I'm going to do. Now, you can do whatever you want to do, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I choose to believe God. As for me. I choose to believe God. Now the Bible says he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's talk about why does God want us to believe him? Why is it that God wants us to believe him? Well, you got to know who God is. Now, notice in the book of Hebrews, and I'll I just turn to that quickly. Hebrews eleven six, and just because it's a it's a it's a it's a key it's a key it's a it's a key to what what we want to talk about. It's a, it's a major key here. Hebrews chapter number eleven, and the sixth verse. But without no, no, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, that's, that is what I wanted. But without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must what? Believe. Must believe. Because that's what we're talking We're talking about provoking to believe. Because it's the believing that's going to make a difference in your life. It's the believing that's going to either cause you to either fail or, 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 or have victory. It's the believing. It's the believing. And so God said, without, but without faith, it's impossible to believe him. It's not impossible to, to please him. For he who comes to God must believe, must believe that he first is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, God's talking to Moses and he says, why won't they believe me? How long will it be before this people believe me? Why is it that God is so interested in us believing him? Because God is God. 
He's a God you can't shake hands with. You can't see him. He don't want you to shake him. He, he, don't, he don't want you to see him, but he wants you to believe that he is without seeing him. Amen. And he loves you so much. See, I was, uh, I was meditating on these things a while back, and I was talking to Jesus about, you know, the, uh, uh, he, was talking to me about, he was talking to me about his, his desire you know, and how he, his ministry prior to his death, burial, and his resurrection, and then his, his, uh, his ministry now. Now, uh, you can see this. Right now, each of us have a relationship with Jesus Christ, right? Yes. Now, now, I can be home, in my home, having a wonderful personal relationship with Jesus, and the relationship can be so rich, it'll seem like I'm the only child he has. But do you know you can be at your house at the same time doing the same thing and it'll be the same way with you? Amen. That's the way God is. Yes. Well, well when, but before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, before we got born again, before this whole transition took place, he was only at one place at one time. And, and, and that, was, that wasn't possible. But, but I want you to see the value of what God has provided for us now because we know him, we know him. Say, Don't know me after the flesh any longer. Remember over there he said that? By the Spirit. And as we know him by the Spirit, then all of us can have our own relationship with him and it, be, and it can be so interesting, rich, and personal. And God wants it that way. That's how he does it. Look at you, know how many people on this earth? And God wants a personal, watch this, a personal relationship with each one of them. Amen. How in the world do you do It takes a God for that. It takes a God. Well, that's what we're talking about. Now, he loves us. You got to know how much God loves you. He is not only your God, but he's your God and your father. Now, when you talk, talking father, see, see, I, I, I can identify with that because I have a, I can, I, I had a, a real physical father. I know what that's like. You know what I mean? And you know the relationship you have with your father and, and, and how your father cares for you, provides for you, and loves you, plus you're nothing. That's the way God is. I want to help us to understand why God wants us to believe him. He wants us to believe him because believing is required for him to be able to do for you the things that he wants to do for you. Amen. God wants to do good things for you. Amen. Oh, help us, please, Father, to understand how God, our Father and our God, desire to have a personal relationship with each of us so he can lavish us and give us yes. all good things. God wants to do that. But we have to believe him in order for that to happen. We have to believe God. We must believe. God, Moses, how long, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? I want to do for them. I want to love them. I want to. Now, we understand this. Fathers that understand fathers and parents, you understand your children, how you care for your children and how you love them. Your love and concern and care for your children has nothing to do with them. Dear Lord, you know that you and I both, and any parent in this room understands that. The love and, respect and the thing that you want to do for your kids has nothing to do with them. You want to give them everything you have. You want to do that. Well, how do you think God is? God wants me to have whatever I want. He wants, but in order for me to have it, I have to believe him. I have to learn to believe him. God wants us to stop acting like the devil has taught us how to act and start acting like he wants us to act. Amen. Amen. The devil come and told us to go and hustle and try to get it yourself. And nobody's going to give you anything. That's not God's language. God wants us to believe him so that he can love us. Come on. Parents, you understand this. You understand how you love your children. You understand how you want your children to have everything. You understand that. 
You're a father. You're a parent. God is my parent. He is my father. He's not just my God, but he's my God. He's my father as well. And my father wants me to be taken care of. You must understand that. And when you understand it, then you will go to his word and start to learn how to, learn how to believe him. That's why God wants us to believe him. That's why Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going, we going with the Lord. Amen. I ain't fooling them other gods. I don't know, I don't know about them things. I don't know what they do. They, not, they don't move anyway. Let's look at the word of God. Let's listen to what God says in reference to his desire, his desire for us. In Luke chapter number 12, in the 32nd verse, he says, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's, father, understand this, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. My dear friends, we, we need to really understand. Now, come on. A parent, my parent, my parent is, parent is relational. It's, it's a re child parent. That's a relationship. I mean, when a parent and child have a relationship, come on. My father, God wants to have a relationship with us. My relationship with my father is through his word and through my prayers unto him. It, it, we develop a relationship. We develop a, no word, no prayer, no relationship. Amen. Well, come back into the natural. If you don't ever see your parent, don't ever talk to them, how can you have a relationship with them? There's no relationship. There is no relationship. No communication, no seeing, no interaction, no relationship. If there's no interaction, no, no interaction with my father, I don't have any relationship with him. And, I, and there's no, no way for me to, I can't have, he, I can't believe him. <coughs> because I don't, we don't talk. I don't, he don't know, I don't know who he is. Don't, don't, do you see how this works? But he wants us, see, we think, see, when, when God talks, when we talk about attending to the word of God, it's, that's not a task. Oh, I got to read my Bible. What are you talking about? We're talking relationship. Do you, do you see what this is? If, if you make this a, a task, well, <coughs> if I don't read my Bible, God's going to be upset with me. Oh, come on. That's not, a, that's not a parental relationship. That's not a father-son relationship, father relationship. No. I'm reading because I want to know him and I want a relationship with him and my prayers with him, my prayer time with him is, my, is, is, is communication. I'm building a relationship because I don't know him. Notice, he that comes to God must believe that he is. I don't even, you, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta have his word to know him. So you, you come to him through and by way of his word to know him because I want a father. I mean, no, nobody, I don't want to be a bastard. That's with no father, no father. I want a father. And God has made it possible so everybody can have a father. Amen. Nobody has to be, be fatherless. He said, I'll be a father to the fatherless. If you don't have a daddy, I, I'll be one for you. Amen. That's how much he loves you. Amen. But wait a minute, you need to know him. 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 And so coming to him, believing that he is, and attending to his word, is going to help me to develop a relationship with him. Now once I develop a relationship with him, then he'll start talking to me. Because he talks to me through his word. Because God's not a man to walk up and shake hands with you. That's not the kind of father he is. He's one for you to believe that he is, and then communicate with him, and then everything that you desire, everything that he could be to you, he is it to you without you seeing him. Boy, that's pretty good. He is everything to me that I could want, that I could ever possibly desire without me seeing him with my little beaties. That's good. That is amazing. And it is through a relationship that he is designed for us to have with him through and by way of his word. So I come to him, I come to his word. And so then, now, now I can know him, I can listen to him, talk to me through his word. And here's what he says to me. He said, it is my good pleasure, son, to give you the kingdom. Wow. I found that out through a relationship with my father. That's how I found it out. That's what I'm reading it to you, but I know about that. It is my, he said, it is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
Proverbs chapter, chapter 8, verse 21. And here's what he says. See, these are the words of my father. And this is what he says to me. Proverbs 8, 21. That I may cause those who love me, do you love your father? Yes. Yes. To inherit wealth. Now, now, the language that the Father uses, isn't it much different from the, what you hear from the world? Amen. But yet it seems like we are putting more effort into listening to the world and trying to do, it, do whatever the world tells us rather than listen to the Father. Now, the reason that that, is, that, that that happens is because you have more confidence in the world. Ha! Huh. You got to fix that. You're going to drive it, you're going to, you are going to gravitate to wherever your confidence are. I was talking to a fellow once, and I, I was telling him about, you know, I, I was sharing my own personal testimony with him about my, my you know, how in, my, in our ministry, and, and when it came to a point in time when I had to stop working outside and just went, went, on, went, to, went to work for God, you know, in God's business, ministry, and I, and I was sharing with him how it didn't look good, and it didn't. It didn't, you know, naturally, it didn't make any sense. And if anyone that was, well, that, that, see, I don't tell people what I'm doing. I, I, don't ask people. When God tells you to do something real, don't ask anybody. If, because if God told you to do it, just go ahead and do it. And so he told me. But, but so, and I, and I, I was sharing it as a testimony to encourage him. And I told him, I said, I just quit and went and did what God told me to do and launched the ministry work, and God took care of me, and I never missed anything. And he looked at me like strange. He said, oh, boy, I couldn't do that. I, don't know if I, I can do that. Well, that's why I didn't ask him before I did it. No. The voice of God always will sound strange in comparison to the voice of the world. And if you're listening to the voice of the world and listen to the voice of God and you don't have a good relationship with God, you're going to listen to what the world tells you to do. Rather than follow God's instructions and get in there and develop a relationship with him and whereby you can begin to listen to instructions that come from him and follow it, rather than listen to the world, if you don't do that, you're going to end up listening to the world because the world makes sense. You're going to leave your job where you know what you're making and you, hey, you're making money to, you know, you're making money, right? Okay, dude. From out here, you can't listen to that. You can't listen to the voices come from out here. You got to listen to the voice of the Spirit of God. That is your Father. It don't make sense. No. But then we're not walking by sight. Didn't your Father tell you that? We don't walk by sight. We walk by he that comes to God must believe that he and that he is a reward of those that diligently seek him. He is a, you got to believe that. We live by faith. And how many times does the Bible say the just shall live by faith? We, the just shall live by faith. And I'm telling you, if you cannot grasp that, if you can't take hold of that, if you cannot embrace that, then you're not going to do this. You're going to always gravitate to what makes sense. And it will always keep you in a tailspin, making sense. You've got to make sense. No, God didn't say it has to make sense. This is where the separation comes. And there are well-meaning people, people that are considered to be Christians, that are still trying to live by making sense. 
And as long as, you make, as long as it has to make sense, you're not going to make it. But when you get to a point where you can just simply, if God see the relationship that you develop with Father God will allow you to put your trust in him. Remember the, 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 the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They, was, they were called to follow that and worship the idol God. But they said, oh, king, we're not going to worship that thing because our God will deliver us. However, if he doesn't, I'm still not going to bow to that thing. See, you're going to have to become fully persuaded that God is. See, I'm telling you, that's exactly what he said. He that comes to God must believe that he. Now, you can't play a game. You can't play this. You can't play that. You either believe that he is or you don't. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of good, well-meaning people that go to church that don't believe he is. I'm telling you. How are you saying, well, pastor, how am I going to get to believing that he is? You're going to have to develop your own relationship with him. It's never going to happen until you have your you develop your rich relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not going to happen. You won't. You cannot. You cannot intellectually believe that God is. It won't happen. You must come to him, and you must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Then when that happens, you are in a position for your life to change. I know what I'm talking about because that is exactly what happened to me. I am who I am. I do what I do because I believe God. I, my choice, I made a decision. I made a decision to believe God. I don't know. Listen, I, I, listen, I, 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 have, I, had, I came to that understanding. I came to that. God, I'm going to do what you say do. Now, whatever happens, so be it. That's the same thing that Daniel did. That's the same thing that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, that's the same thing they did. I'm going to do what's right. If it, if it, 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 the, the, the Hebrew boy said, if he doesn't, then I'm still not going to bow to that thing. Then just take me out. I'm not going to bow to that thing. You want to put me down there and make me, give me bait for the lions? Well, then put me down there because I'm not going to bow to that thing. You got to come to that. You, every one of us is going to have to come to a point in time when you're going to make up your mind, listen, I'm going to do what God says. If whatever happens, then so be it. If you can't do that, you're not ready for this journey. You're going to have to come to a point. I don't care. They, well, they, well, they just have to put me in jail. But I'm not going to relent. You, you, got, you, got to get, you, got to, you got to get to that point. You say, well, Pastor, how am I going to get to that point? By developing a relationship with Jesus Christ. When you develop a relationship with him, when you become fully persuaded that he is, I believe that God is, then it doesn't matter. Because if you take my life, then it doesn't matter. I'm going to be with Jesus. Why? Because I believe that he is. You see, see, here's see, the problem that we've been having is we are trying to manipulate God. We don't mean it. We don't mean it. Do it that way. We want everything that God says, but we don't. We don't. We're not ready to step out there. We want to see where I'm going to put my foot's going before I raise it up. If you check the record, God's always been like this. Wouldn't it would have been nice if there had been a nice ferry waiting for the Hebrew children to go across the Jordan River? Wouldn't it have been nice for a nice carrier, cargo carrier, ship to be waiting for the children of Israel when they got to the Red Sea? Wouldn't it have been nice? But it wasn't. And they got to the river, got to the, got to the Red Sea, and they're not under the sea there. You've been to the beach. You know what it's like. You're going to walk across that thing? Are you kidding me? And then and Pharaoh behind them. And he's not there to play hopscotch. He's coming to kill. You, do you see what I'm talking about? You say, man, why does God put people in such a jam? Well, you believe that he is. It's no jam to God. It's, there was no jam to God. 
when he told Joshua to take the children across the Jordan River. It would have been nice to have a nice brand new bridge built across the river. But it wasn't. In fact, it was flood time. Not only was there was a river there, but it was flooded. You ever seen a flooded river? And they said, go down there. He said, go ahead. And God said, go, go. Now, even it would have been nice to, okay, start walking down and then see the water move back. No. 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 They had to walk to that and they had to lift their feet and step, go to step before the, before the water would move. You, you follow what I'm saying? Come on. Now, it's easy for us to read that. Uh, they didn't have no dry, they didn't do a dry run. They, 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 didn't, they, 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 they had not seen, we, we read in the back of the book. They didn't see it that way. You, you, do you follow what I'm saying? What do you see here? What you see here is a people that have come to a point to say, I don't care. If I drown, I'm going to do what God said do. That's what we're talking about. And this is what we said. Well, that's what God means when he said, when he, whoever, when you come to God, you must believe that he is. If you don't believe that he is, then you believe that you're going to go broke. You believe that. I didn't believe I was going to go broke. Not under that, but I didn't really care if I went broke. See, I, listen, I'm, I'm preaching what I, I had to do this. I did this. Nice church here, beautiful, nice people, everything. It wasn't like this. It was when I'm starting. And it wasn't nobody. Just a handful of people there. And leaving the job. And you know what was so funny? I was making money hand over fist. I was making more <laughs> when I was making money. God said, didn't let it go. What? Don't go to work? Quit? You know, but I had to believe that. I had to believe that. In other, see, I had to believe that he was. See, he, I'm, and I'm, because see, I'm I know where you live. And people have been, you know, missing God because they're afraid to let go. I've shared with you the, the, the illustration about the trapeze, how they have to let one. You ever see these people on the high wires? You know how they flying through the air? And then they got to let one go before they catch the other one. You got to let you you can't catch the other one. So there's a there's a there's kind of a blackout there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Between letting those hands go and catching those hands. You, you follow what I'm saying? You know, you say, well, why does God do that? I don't know. You ask him when you get to heaven. But I can tell you, he's not gonna let you down. See, see. You're the one that has to say, I believe that God is. I, I, I can't say that for you. I can't say that for you. I can say that for me. But you're going to have to say, I believe that he is. And when you get to the point where you can develop in your, and, and I'm telling you, is you're not going to say it until you develop that relationship. I believe that God is. Because if you don't get to the point of believing, because see, here's what happened. I can tell you what happens, but you're still going to have to do it for yourself. When you get to the point of believing that God is, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't work the way that you think it should, it still don't matter. See, see, see remember God recorded it in the Bible with Shadrach and Meshach. They said, listen, God will deliver us. Watch this. But if he doesn't, I'm still not going to bow to you. Do you see what we're talking about? If he doesn't, listen, if, if God don't pay the mortgage, I'm still going to quit. Do you, you see what we're talking about? See, see this, this is where the, the Christians and non-Christians are separated. If, if he doesn't pay the car note, I'm still going to do what God tells me to do. If he doesn't, see, I'm, I'm going to do what God said do. So you better have a relationship, and you better know what God said. Now, you out there playing games, and, and, and you saying what God said, and he didn't say that, you're still in trouble. You got some of that going on. Somebody want to look real spiritual. God told me, go ahead. 
God better have told you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. People, I know what I'm talking about. But, but, but listen, when you have developed the right relationship, you won't have none of these problems. You will know when God tells you what to do and what, to, what not to do. And when God tells you what to do, then it will work, and it will work every time. God will never leave you stranded. I've been young, now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. You will never see it. God will never, but never let you down. And so these principles, see, now what I just shared with you was, a, is a, was kind of a dramatic experience, but your everyday life is just that way. Your everyday life is just that way. Now, when God says that, listen, he says here in Proverbs 8.21, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. Watch this. The same principle works in that verse. You can either go try to hustle your own wealth, or you can fall in love with Jesus and let Jesus give you his wealth. When people come telling you to have, have some sense, and they out there getting two and three jobs and don't have time for no word. And they don't read the Bible, don't have time to pray, don't have time because I got to go to work. They have missed it. They want wealth, but they're trying to get it the, their way. I'm telling you, if you want it the God way, you got to do it the God way. You got to do it the God way. The principles are the same. See, whether you're standing before Nebuchadnezzar or whether you just, whether you, doesn't make, doesn't make any difference. It doesn't, faith principles are the same. Everywhere, they're the same. That I may cause those who love me, I will cause them to inherit wealth. Though, who? Who are you going to call to inherit wealth? Those that love me. You know what he said about those that love me? If you love me, you'll do what I say. Ah. You see what we're talking about? How are you going to love him? By having a relationship with him. The, one of some of the biggest messes you can see is people that's trying to do what God says without a relationship. It's, ain't gonna, it's not going to happen. It's going to be real messy. It's going to be real messy. And they're going to end up, they're going, to end up going out saying, well, that don't work. Yeah, you know, not for you. But it works. Proverbs chapter 13, look at verse number 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children. Children's children. Yeah. But the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. That's God's way of making you wealthy. He will take the wealth of the wicked, and give it to you. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, it won't work for you. You say, how are these things going to be? By believing God. That's all we're talking about. See, you got to believe. See, what God says, you must believe it. And I say this because I'm telling you, it's so vitally important because we have, I think we, we went to school too long. And then, and then we, we get intelligent, and it has to make sense to us, and we reason everything out. And we pull out the legal pad and try to make it work, and if it don't work, we quit it. I know. I had one. It didn't work, but I threw it away and left the job anyway, and I never missed a stroke. I said, I never, I've, I've increased from the, I've, I've never stopped increasing since I walked away. Since I walked away from that job, I never ceased to increase. I can testify that. I didn't know then. But see, then, see, watch this. Here's my attitude then. My attitude then was I really didn't care. I was going to leave and do what God says if I never, if I had to, if I had to live up at the bar and beg and kick and bite, I, don't, I, was, I was still going to do what God said. That's, that's what I'm trying to get us to understand. You have to believe that God is. Never mind the, what you, the, the, because the devil is going to bring up all of those negative things and say, what if? 
You're going to hear more what is from the devil when you start obeying God. That's all he knows, what if. He, he can't say, he, that's all he knows. Well, whoa, 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 what when this? What if that? What if that? What if that? And you listen to those what ifs, and you're going to backslide, and you're going to go back to doing it the old way. You're going to go get yourself another job, and that's not going to be enough. Then you go get a third job. Some people got three of them, and it's still not enough. I don't know what I don't know what time you're going to have two three jobs. You don't do three jobs anyway. What time you where you, where you get the time from? Because God never gave me but twenty five hours a day. Maybe He gave you some more. But most jobs require eight hours to work on them, right? The first one, eight hours. Where any good any any doctor saved or unsaved will tell you you need to sleep eight hours. Well, you, you, you're not, you didn't create you just to eat, just to sleep and, and work. We are social beings, you know. You don't live by yourself. You're a social person. So you have eight hours of social activities. You got eight hours of work and eight hours of sleep. Now, where do you get time to get a second job? Or a third one? When are you going to work it? What are you going to borrow from? Your sleep time? People do. They end up in an early grave. I know that's cold, but it's the truth. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen people in early graves because they work, 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 and work themselves right into walk right, work right over into the grave. Somebody else come along and spend the money. That's the truth. I know it's hard. I know that's hard, but it's the truth. But if it'll get your attention to believe God, then I'll, it's worth it. You learn to believe God. God will take care of you. Hebrews, uh, uh, Tim, uh, Proverbs chapter number 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. This is the God that, that loves you. This is your father talking to you. But let me tell you something. You know why, this, why these, you know why these per verses does not excite people? Because they don't have a relationship with God. They don't believe him. They don't believe him. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the reason that these scriptures do not excite people is because they do not believe it. Now, I know they'll fuss with me and say they do, but they don't. You read this and don't get excited, you don't believe it. Blessing. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. God's blessing. How are you going to get blessed? Because I have a relationship with him. And he has no sorrow with it. See, money is not riches. Dear God, people need to understand that one. They think, give me some money, give me some money. Fool! You can get some money and you'll still be a fool. And then all of the sorrow that goes with it. See, people in high-income brackets are not happy. They're worse off than the ones in low-income brackets. Because the guy that's making $300,000 a year, he got a $300,000 a year lifestyle. He really can't afford to miss his, his car note. He can't afford to miss his mortgage. Because he got a million dollar house. You know what the mortgage is on a million dollar house? Somebody right quick, right quick, right quick. Someone that. <laughs> it's planning. I can assure you of that. Do, do you see what the, and he's at sorrow, but it looks good. Oh, man, look at this guy. This guy, he's making 300000 500000 a year. Yeah. Spend half the year in the bar. I'm telling you, sorrow. Sorrow, why? You're doing it yourself. But the blessings of the Lord. See, what, that's why God put this in you. See, the devil told people, he said, get some money, you're good. No, you're not. I've listened to people with money that got saved, and they told the truth. 
I've, I've, listened, I've, had, I've listened to the testimony. Money's not wealth. In fact, a money and food is dangerous. It's not wealth. It's not peace. It's not joy. If you check the statistics on suicide, a lot of those people that commit suicide are not broke. They're not broke. You, you, you deal with them all the time. You know what I'm talking about. They're not broke. But the lie that the devil comes to heaven, you get you some money. You, just, I mean, you don't got time to go to church. Get some, go get you a job. Get you, get you some money. Get you. No, no, that's not right. God will give you everything you want. It pleases him. That's why he wants us to believe him. So we can have a relationship with him so he can give you. He is your father. What father doesn't want to give his children stuff? Everybody wants to give the kids. What do they have in it then to give them? Or not they want to give them something. God is your father. He wants to give you. It pleases. It's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. But it won't mean a thing unless you believe that. That's all I'm saying. We're talking about believing God. You've got to believe that. You've got to have more confidence in what your father says than in what the system around us say. You've got to have confidence in your father. Moses, how long will these people not believe me? How long will they not believe me? How long will they not believe him? Believe me. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. We shut it down. He says, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches. Listen to what he's, listen to the language here. Nor to trust. See, God can raise you up and then you can switch over and start trusting your riches and you'll get, in, get you in trouble. He said, don't do that. He said, command them, give them a heads up, who are rich. So there are those who are rich in this present age, not to be hoarded, nor to trust in uncertain riches. What? <coughs> but to, but in the what? Don't you ever, I don't care how much money God put into your account, don't you ever trust anything but God. Don't ever trust your balance. And I say that knowing what I'm talking about. Your trust is always, I don't care how high your balance go, your trust is always in God. That's what, he, that's what his word says. My trust is in the living God. My trust is not in my bank account. My trust is not in my investment account. My trust is in God. Because if that thing blow up tomorrow, if the market sink tomorrow, Jesus is still my Lord. You hear me? My confidence is not in that. You know, I'm, I'm not celebrating that watching the market. I don't, in fact, I encourage people, don't even look at it. Don't even, don't even look at it. Because you, you know, she's tempted to trust it. You hear what I'm saying? He said, do not put your trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Watch this. Who does what? Who gives us richly all things to enjoy. It says that, that's your father talking. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't give you your stuff so you could hide it. Dear God, we had a generation like that one time. They, but it, it, was, it was all false, false humility. You know, oh. no, no. God didn't give you your stuff for you to hide it. He gave it to you because he wanted you to have it. And he gave it to you to enjoy so that other people, the heathen or the unbeliever, can see you enjoying the wealth that God has given unto you and come get saved themselves. Do you understand where this thing is? You don't understand where this thing is? So he said, no, no, don't you put, no, that's why I want, I want to elevate you. Now think about this. Now nobody, no, there's not a parent in this room that would boast themselves to be better than God. How, every parent in this room is always trying to build up their children and, 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 and giving them and doing, doing everything they can for them. Some of them try to build them up so much as I tell them lies and all that. Because they want them to be something so bad. 
You know why they do that? Because you're the parent. Where did you get that from? You got it from your father. God is always boasting and billing you up and giving you just as much as you can, you, you, he can give you because he wants you to look good. Your father wants you to look good just like you want your kids to look good. Your father wants you to look good because when you look good, then the world is going to see you, and they're going to want to be like you, and they'll say, how did you get like that? You say, Jesus. Do, do, you, do you see why? Do you see the way this thing is designed? God has designed it this way. But watch this. None of it will work unless you believe him because he can't even get it to Because if you don't believe him, it won't work. Are you willing to believe God? Then stand to your feet. Let's go out here believing him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God wants you to believe him. He wants you and I to believe him. When you read his word, when you read the word of God, believe him. Word of God, prayer, and the word is a, is a way of life for the believer. Prayer and the word is a way of life. Prayer and the word is a way of life. It's going to cause you to develop a rich relationship with Father. When you develop, develop a rich relationship with him, then you can believe him, and he will exalt you and raise you up and do, do great and mighty things through you. Father, we thank you this day. What a glorious day. We are so honored to be called children of God. Father, we choose to believe.